right today we are going to talk about the movement of small gut right movement of small intestine small intestine small you know that small intestine consists of three parts yes what are those three parts yes yes you start with the duodenum and then there is yes jejunum and then we have ileum is that right and ileum terminate at cecum now here we have duodenum from here up to here here is jejunum about 5% of small intestine is what is this duodenum about 45% is or yes 40% is uh, jejunum and about 55% is ileum right now we are going to talk about the movements first of all what is the purpose of uh, small intestine the major purpose of small intestine is digestion and absorption right so it means the movement uh, which are going to be there in the small intestine they must serve and help in digestion and absorption and the motility in small intestine what it is doing there the movement in small intestine number one it moves the content right it moves the content throughout and for movement purpose of course the movement generated are propulsive movement which are peristalsis Secondly, not only we need to move the content through the small intestine, but we also need to mix the content of small intestine. We need to mix the contents of small intestine, right? With what? With the gastrointestinal secretions. Because in small intestine, of course, from here, right, there are biliary secretions from gallbladder coming, and there are pancreatic secretions. Right, small intestine is receiving the bile, it is also receiving the pancreatic juices, it is also uh, receiving the intestinal secretions from the mucosa of the small gut, uh, which is called succus entericus. So, it is receiving bile, it is receiving pancreatic juices, and it is from its own wall, there are glands which are secreting small intestinal secretions or which are called succus entericus so all bile and pancreatic juices and success entericus needs to be mixed with the content of small intestine needs to be mixed thoroughly with the chyme so that digestion can be done well is that right and another purpose of small intestinal movement is of course not only to move the content not only to mix the content with the secretions but there is one more purpose. Yes, what is that purpose? Just imagine. What could be the third purpose? One is very clear movement of the, uh, you are moving the content through peristaltic movement, right? Then you are mixing the content with the segmentational movement, or we will talk about mixing movement. Do you think uh, there is any other purpose of movements of small intestine? Yeah, they help in absorption because when the contents of small intestine are churned, is that right? Then more and more areas of the content come are exposed to the mucosal wall so that mucosal wall can absorb the digested uh, material right so another is that exposure of the content to the mucosal yes wall for better absorption right so what's there that small intestinal movement move the contents there should be peristaltic movement and there should be mixing movement to mix the contents or kind with the uh, secretions and of course uh, moving the contents and churning the content in such a way that more and more uh, sub, uh, contents of small intestine come in contact with the wall of mucosa so that there should be absorption of digested material is that right and of course sometimes small intestinal movement they become reverse anti-peristalsis which contribute to the vomiting is that right so they also play a role in 
vomiting. Now, after knowing this thing, uh, we know that small intestine has two types of muscles. Number one, there is muscularis mucosa in the mucosa, right? And there is muscularis externa, right? First of all, the major movement are not produced by the muscularis mucosa, right? The muscularis layer, which is in the mucosa, it produces only very minor changes in the mucosa, mucosal lining, right? Major movements are produced by muscularis externa, circular layer and longitudinal layer in muscularis externa, which is a thick layer of muscles. But muscularis mucosae, which is a very thin sheet of muscles that only produces different kinds of mucosal fold, right? They produce mucosal fold so that they increase the absorption and they increase the surface area for the absorption. Secondly, muscularis mucosae has also its smooth muscles going into the core of the villi, small intestinal villi and those muscles elongate and shorten the intestinal villi so that intestinal villi protrude deeply into lumen and regress back and then deeply protrude into lumen and regress back so that whatever in the lacteals which are the lymphatic drainage of these villi lacteals in the lacteals whatever fats are there they are milked and absorbed so we also call it milking process so muscularis mucosa has what what kind of two uh, two activities number one muscularis mucosa which is controlled by submucosal plexus muscularis mucosa is controlled by submucosal plexus point number one secondly muscularis mucosa produce different kinds of infolding of mucosa in the lumen so that surface area should be increased number three muscularis mucosa is uh, moving the villi and because it is moving the villi so it not only uh, repeatedly will I get elongated and then shortened elongated and then shortened and in this way not only it help in absorption but it also milk the lacteals so that whatever material is absorbed in capillaries and lacteals that can be pushed into or you can say flushed into uh, drainage of vascular system am i clear but muscularis mucosae don't play any major role in major mixing movement and they don't play any major role in peristaltic movement right another uh, concept which is very important to understand that usually it takes three hour to five hour for the chyme right or contents of the small gut to move from the duodenum and jejunum up to the ileocecal valve right it takes about three to five hours right to move the contents of small intestine from duodenum through jejunum ileum up to ileocecal valve now the question is that that uh, sometimes it becomes fast and other time it becomes slow what could be the reason can you tell me some factor sometimes it whatever content are here they will reach there in two hours and sometimes it takes up to four or five hours what could be the reason very good it depends on the nutrients present in the chyme if in the chyme there are more nutri nutrients it means we need more time for digestion and absorption so if chyme is very rich in nutrients uh, this movement will become slow but if chyme or the contents of this small intestine are poor in nutrients we don't need much digestion and absorption of course this will be faster movement right and of course you are very right that the nutrients which can maximum slow down the movement of small intestine are fat you must be remembering that when fat is uh, reaching to the duodenum it, it activates the release of cholecystokinin right and cholecystokinin can modulate the small intestinal and gastric movement Am I clear? Any question up to this?